What you have. Like this and this. Um, okay. Okay. Well, we're going to probably all those kind of ways today. So, where in Hawaii are you? Uh, Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. I've been on that big island twice in Hawaii. The next time I want to check on Molly. Oh, hi. Oh, I love that one. I got it in um, Papa when I went this summer. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, I love it. It's, I love the rainbow. Isn't that pretty? I told my husband, oh, I have to get a yoga. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm glad you had such a fun time. Yes. I bet you just feel so rejuvenated. Yes. Could you go away? Sun, ocean. My boyfriend and his girls and his dad. There are six of us. We can go on. We are in the two cars, so the young ones can do their thing. So, oh, so you guys just had the best time. You were. How long were you there? Were many, like 10 days. So, was anything weird with COVID over there? You know what? They are all going to be cautious. They're going to be straight to the next day. Yep. And the uh, Southwest Airlines were prepared, but they got us checked in with fans to get to Hawaii, so we didn't have to worry about it there. Oh. We had the vaccination cards ahead of time, and we load them up. They were just get you so easy. And that's nice. So they kind of smooth. become efficient with everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I remember in the beginning of the pandemic, like, people said, like, it was hard to get to Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. They might have smoked themselves, right? Well, for rainy yeah. days, you use humidity and stuff, but it's just so lush. I mean, that energy today is so. It's like nothing else. And then the sun comes out and you get double rainbows, three yeah, rainbows, waterfalls. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's like nowhere else in the world. Yeah, it's yeah. Really I'm glad we got the islands before the British island. <laughs> <laughs> Home for the holidays? Yes. Okay. It was 
was quiet and the bee spoke with his voice. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Quiet, quiet. Quiet, quiet. How's your son doing? Did you say he was having a hard adjustment at his new school? Um, not really. He's doing better? He is, he just doesn't like school. So uh, second day of school, he pushed some other kid to the floor and was suspended yeah. for three days. That's what it was. Yes. I then, remember you telling us about that. Then he was like, yeah, I get to stay at home for three days. <laughs> it was not a consequence for that. No, that, that, that doesn't, you know, it's just more time. Kind of <laughs> yeah. So I have yet to write his teacher a note to say, you know, here is what he's thinking. Great. Because he got himself out of the ABA therapy that way uh, by, you know, like whenever the therapist showed up, he just left home eloping for like one hour or two hours. And then they, they canceled the service on us. And uh, his response is, Yay, they cannot handle me. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, look, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, again, yeah, so yeah, he is like yeah, figuring yeah. out how things work yeah. and how to break it. So, yeah. So that's why I said peaceful is a good thing. Yeah. That's all I asked for. Mm -hmm. Yes. A little bit of peace and quiet. Right. Oh, my. <laughs> Oh goodness. Uh. I'm gonna be a heavy stack today. In the area. <laughs> I may have to sign and help you put it on uh, on the area that I need it to. You may not have it. None of us. Uh, uh, this is heavy. Oh, <laughs> I never, I've never used these before. I've been actually excited to use these one day. Oh, okay. We got to do this today. Cool. Can you say voluntary as well? Yeah, I am here. Yeah, we were just here. I haven't been in in a while. I had COVID. I was fine, but. <laughs> Um, kind of over the holidays. Oh, really? Um, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad, but I had to stay locked up and oh, and, um, so your husband, did he get it? Yep, he got it. Oh, he's getting it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but I'm glad to be back. Yeah, just relaxing too. I guess right like, now the trend is everybody's going to get it. Yep. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I know. So that's why I'm not doing my booster shots. I'm not either. Because me neither. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people have booster shots and then they still get it. My so, mom had just got a booster like a couple weeks before and then she got it. It was actually very sick. Yeah. So it's like well, the theory goes the booster or any vaccine will like basically it will hit your immune system. So if your immune is already weakened and then you got the real thing, oh. and the, you know, it's like your bank account, it's already reduced by $20. Now you have only $80 to spend against the real thing. That makes sense. Yeah. And what I did was like after my second shot in April last year, for the first time in my close to 30 years in North America, I started to get seasonal allergies. Really? And I think it has something to do with that vaccine. Huh. You know, I'm not against the vaccine. I voluntarily got two shots. Yeah. But then the whole summer, I couldn't do any gardening, nothing. And then I did not get enough exercise, my sleep and everything was off. Huh. So that's why I started yoga in somewhere around July. Because good. I was that's like, good thinking about that. Yeah, I was like, if it's bad enough now, I have to do something for myself. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. 
to go crazy. So no, you know, like there are different views and the different stories about this vaccine. And I understand that, you know, people come from different personal experience. But now I start to get more and more negative about it. Yeah. I feel ya. It's originally I was taking the two shots. I thought after that you are done, you can just go everywhere and you know. Right. It's no magic bullet. I mean, no. originally I think that was my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, because my son, anyway, he cannot stay home. He has to go to my house. He has to go to places. So I'm like, I might as well just get the shot and then I can take him to places. Yeah. And then to my disappointment, even after that, no. He was still kind of right. Yeah. That bad. No. I... <sighs> the more he's going to be around, the more we get used to it. Our immunity is going to build up to it. Yeah, like any other disease in the past. Yeah. yeah. Another one. Yeah. Adding to our portfolio. <laughs> yes. So I'm just hoping that uh, it's getting weaker and weaker to the point it's more like a flu thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you just live with it. And it would be, you know, just like before this, people that had conditions underlying conditions that die from pneumonia and from yeah. bronchitis and from yeah. flu. This is going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Only yeah. 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 for them. Yeah. I don't know if Michelle is going to make it. Let me double check. <laughs> So we're just going to start if she's late, she will join us. Okay. Happy New Year! Yes, so today we'll work on our hips, our shoulders, our low backs, and chest. And we will need big bolster, small bolster, maybe a blanket, and we have this heavy weight we're gonna use today. And if you don't have one at home, that's okay. <laughs> it's not a must. Okay, so we will start on our belly this time. Stretching the legs out, and then the left knee is gonna come out to the side. So we can open that groin, the inner thigh on the left side. Hands can be underneath your forehead or you can put your blanket there if you'd like. And start to connect with the breath. 
receive each breath into the body. The inhale, energize the system. You bring in new vibration. And with the exhalation, now you can release and let go of anything that is old, stale, and non-useful. Breathing in, energy, enjoy, vibration. And breathing out, stagnation, stress, tension, any negative emotions. Notice how you can also control the breath as you inhale, deepen the breath just by a little bit more, add a little bit on the top of the breath. And pause, noticing how the breath expands through the torso, through the front and the back, sending it down to the belly, to the throat, to the outsides of the rib cage. And then let that breath flow out, squeezing from the belly, through the chest, through the throat, out of the body. And as you slow down the breath in this way, you have the ability and chance to slow down the heart, the nervous system, the jumpy monkey in your head. Just becoming fully present, aware and alert of where you are right here, right now. Receiving and embracing this present moment fully with joy. And receiving whatever comes from your practice with compassion into your body, into your mind. Even the negative emotions, whatever arises, we first have to acknowledge it and see it before we can release it. It's not everything black and white. It's not everything bad or good. There's always something in between. And we cannot be averse to even things that we may not like because that causes even more resistance, more negative energy. So we learn to allow whatever arises in the body, in the mind, knowing that we have a choice to resist them, hold on to them, or let them go. And what we don't need, what doesn't feel good, we learn that we can let it go. One breath at a time, one thought at a time with intention and mindfulness, with full presence and awareness, we can change. We cannot change the past, we cannot change the future, but we can change this present moment. Because even the past and the future, they were always represented in the present. It's the only opportunity we have for change, for transmutation, for growth, transcendence, liberation. This one present fleeting moment. And enlightenment or trans transcendence liberation doesn't really mean to become a monk, could go to the top of the mountain and don't care of the world. It just means that you can transcend your own thoughts, that you decide they are not good for you. Or even the emotions that arise in the body that have been stored. And that's the purpose of this yin yoga, to liberate that energy that has been stuck in the body based on our past experiences that we could not process as children. 
adolescents or even adults. Because traumatic experiences would always be happening to us. There's no way we can avoid them. But just the way we see them, receive them or not, or process them or not, is the difference we can make for ourselves and then for others. And now we're gonna lengthen this leg a little bit, maybe see if we can have an opportunity to stretch the leg out a bit more, just for a couple more breaths. So stretch that knee open. Maybe you have a different experience here. Just one more breath. And then bring that knee in back gently and stretch the leg long on the mat. We'll open the right side now. So bend the knee, stretch it open to the side. So rest your forehead on your palms or blanket. Get back into the rhythm of your breath. Befriend your body through the means of the breath. The breath becomes the mediator between the body and the mind, the emotions, the feelings, whatever arises in this moment. As women particularly, we store a lot of stuff in our hips, like junk in the trunk kind of thing because we store babies there and we are meant to carry babies and we learn to store other things too that may not be useful or beneficial. So it's just kind of an area where we dump stuff into. And now this is a way to release it, let it go, or even transform it. When the hips are tight, it's not only an expression of our physical body that is creating the tightness. It's also the emotional luggage that we hold that create that resistance. So we breathe, let go, release, and relax. We start to open up whatever area feels tight or angry or closed off dark, shady, we eliminate those corners in the body that we have not been or seen for a while. Breathing through whatever arises on the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual body. In yoga, we actually do learn and know that we have nine bodies or koshas or sheets. So it's not only the physical, we are physical, we are mental, we are emotional, we are spiritual, we are also the aura. And there's a few more that I can't remember right now. And now see if you want to explore stretching the leg out a little further. With each breath, bringing fresh energy into this right groin and hip flexors. And with each out breath, releasing that stagnation, that blockage, that tension or resistance. 
freeing up our hips, creating a different experience of our own body. Inhale now, bring the leg back in, stretch it out first. Press the forehead down, lengthen the whole body, pressing the left toes out, lengthening the leg, drop it down, and then stretch and lengthen through the right leg and drop it down. Just really lengthening from the hip socket. Okay, now we're going to inhale and come to a half child's pose. So the right knee is going to stay into the body like in child's pose. And the left leg is going to stretch out. Kind of similar position, but a little different. So we extend the arms out in the front and stretch your left leg out to the side. Try and make the foot in the same plane from heel to toe. And just work in that whole inner leg meridian. From the groin into the spleen meridian. And also the hip flexor and the lymphatic system in the groin area. So take some deep breaths here. Here you may rest your head on the short bolster if you'd like to have it closer to you. Or even the big bolster just to have a resting place. Yeah, see how that feels? Nice. And see with time if you can even walk the hands out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. We're increasing the flow in the meridians in the lower body. As we sit at our jobs or we drive, we really create a, a blockage from the energy flowing from the upper body to the lower body. And we get less energy in the legs and then things stagnate and energy doesn't circulate. We struggle and we can get diseases of the lower body, of the hips and knees and legs, veins and such. So we're helping this energy to flow, get rid of the blockages and the resistance in the hips. And we befriend these body parts that we mostly don't get in touch with. We're too busy doing other things. But we have the yin yoga for that. So we are being grateful.
So let's walk the hands a little bit to the right, opening a little bit into the hip crest through the side body. Just hanging over that right knee a little bit more, just for three breaths. Notice what are you opening now? Where do you feel the most resistance? Where can you breathe more into? Let go and relax, soften and receive. Inhale, walk the hands back in, walk them in close to the body and bring this left knee back. Very gently, very slowly, we're gonna to transition to the other side. So now the left knee stays bent, and the right leg stretches out. Sit back towards your heel as much as you're able, and walk the hands out in front. See how much different this side may be. They are usually somewhat different, and that's okay. Deepen the breath, observe what comes up and let it go. Back off from the pose a little bit if you need to. Find a comfortable edge. Find the breath and find stillness. The three main principles of yoga, of in yoga. And now start to walk the hands a little bit to the left. And take some meaningful breaths for the side body. Inhale and bring it back gently. Bring that knee back very slowly. You're gonna sit back in a full child's pose now. Bring the knees open to the side and slide your hips back. Just finding that easy, comfortable child's pose. Three breaths here to recover before we find the next shape. All right, great job. Now we will come to um, doubling opening the hips into a big frog pose. Come sideways on your mat. You'll have the knees open as wide as you're able. Bring the blanket in the front so you can rest your elbows on it or your forehead if you get there. So the knees are open to your widest stance and then the feet go wider than the knees. Okay, so you can use the blanket even for your knees. 
if um, the floor is a little stiff right now, right? Okay, so we're gonna find our comfort here. So hips stay on top of the knees. We're not gonna bring them forward or back, just aligned right there. And take a few breaths here. You may be on your hands or elbows or forehead may drop to the floor. Whatever feels good. We're gonna wait here about four minutes. Take your time, assess the posture, make sure it's comfortable enough. And let the time take effect. So learning to be patient again with our bodies, just like with babies. Take them from stage one. In the winter with being flu season, COVID season and everything else, we get hit with change of temperatures can cause us to get sick or get allergies or, so the lymph needs to really be flowing, right? So we're helping the groin area open up and flow. So we can release the used stale energy out of the body into the form of lymph which carries all the byproducts of what the body processes are doing to keep us healthy. <clears throat> All right, inhale and bring the feet in first. Walk the hands back. Slowly bring the knees closer. Now we get back on our belly with a small bolster underneath our chest right in front of us here. Okay, so we'll get in position first and then we'll do a few things. <clears throat> so drop your hips down. Keeping the chest lifted with a bolster right under the arms. Okay, now we're gonna bend the knees, getting our feet, heels to drop towards the glutes without forcing them, just let them see where they wanna hover. So this will open the front of our hips, which you'll hardly ever get a chance to open. So knees can even be a little separated more than hips, just by a little bit. And then let those feet hinge towards the body. 
and then I would come around and help you with the heavy bolster because then it's to go on top to help you stretch those hips open those hips more all right so i'm gonna bring that heavy weight so jane i'm gonna put it right on the top of your seat bones on your glutes here okay all right is that enough weight or if you need more i'll bring another one Thank you. Thank you. yeah because we're gonna help those hips sink towards the floor carrie you're doing pretty good there your hips are really touching some people's hips don't touch the floor when they like this way this helps them kind of release down. Jane, how are you doing? You need another one? Is it heavy enough for you? Yeah. Okay, good. So we're placing a heavy weight. We might not have those available at home, but these are available in the uh, studio here. So we place that right over the hips. So basically on our gluteus maximum and minus minor <laughs> right there in the middle. And then we still have the knees bent and the heels may drop towards that little weight a little bit more. The hips are dropping towards the floor. And with time, the feet may drop a little bit more towards the glutes. We're gonna stay here another two, three minutes, yes. So this is also a gauge for us to see how our hips are doing when the hips are aligned properly with the rest of the body. In this position, they would be touching the floor. If they're not, that means we just need to do this posture more. And sometimes we just use our hips in such a way when we sit at the desk, we lean to one side more or the other, and uh, one hip may be touching the floor and one may not. So then we gotta leave more weight into the one that's not touching. And we gotta learn a little bit about our hips here. Just have a one-on-one -on -one convo with your hips. And really listen. Maria says, address what needs to be addressed. Back off if you need to, just see what you are. It doesn't matter. Now for the next two minutes, we're gonna lift the chest a little bit, look straight out in front and lean your elbows onto that small bolster. So you're lifting your chest, you're opening up a little bit like a cobra, almost into a Danurasana, the bow pose, a baby version of that. 
with a very easy version of it. Nothing forcing. Just lifting up through the chest. Keeping the length, not compressing. Two minutes here. This will shift the hips further down into the ground. If you need to readjust the hips, maybe move your feet side to side and lean your weight more into the one that is more resistant. And this also energizes the hips so much, the front of the hips that get the least amount of vibration of nutrients, of blood, of circulation. So now it forces everything in because you bring the energy from up and from down right into the hips. So it meets right in the center in that triangle that it's usually closed off. Now it's really open. So we're really revitalizing, reinvigorating the hips in the front area. Because the hips have four facets, just like any other joint, but we only move them in one direction all the time. We don't go sideways or backwards. So some of these three out of four areas can stagnate easily. That's when I go to boot camp, we have to do this backward stepping. We step back, 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 back. And then we uh, skip backwards too. It's really fun. All right, let's gently release the legs and then the bolster. And you can just grab that from the side that has a handle and take it out to the side. And we'll transition back in child's pose to release that back now. Reach back, reach back, open the knees, slowly reach back. And take a few breaths here to recover the low back. And stretch up into tabletop. Curl the toes under. We're going to give a nice stretch to the toes and foot. Curl the toes and reach your weight back over your heels and sit up on your heels. So we're activating the whole leg now by going to the toes. Sit up tall, hands on your thighs. Get those toes. To stretch this pose, it's also called broken toes, but make sure you don't break your toes. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it brings all that circulation into the ball of the foot in all the toes. In the winter, we get to be more cold in the extremities, so this is gonna invigorate that area and bring a lot of blood flow and meridian flow in that area of the body. If it's too much, bring less weight coming forward a little bit or even hands on the floor and just leave a little bit of weight on the toes. You decide how much you wanna put. Good. So if you're not ballerinas, we, our toes are not very flexible. So. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, now we'll reverse that stretch and we sit straight on the ankles with the feet down to stretch the front of the foot and the ankle. So sit back. In Virasana, seated warrior. Close the eyes and find your peace and comfort here just for almost a minute. If you want to open the shoulders a little bit, rotate the arms back and have your elbows into your hands behind your body so we can open the shoulders and pectoralis as well. You can choose to rotate the head when you're here as well. All right, let's go ahead and release that. We will transition into butterfly pose, Baddha Konasana. Sitting back on our sit bones, bring the feet together out in front. Bring the feet in and close to the body as much as you'd like. Now we'll open the lower back. Exhale, sink your weight slightly forward. You can also use your big bolster to rest your forehead on. You want to have something to rest on. Or you can just let the body hang using gravity. This is a very conducive pose for looking inward, we're curling into ourselves. Just like in the warm, we're like curled in, just with the knees being a little bit astray. And we're just coming back to our center, coming back to the core, to the being that we are deep inside the essence, the truth, the pure energy that you are, the spirit of you. Because we are first spirit and then we get a physical body. And the spirit, the essence, the soul never dies. You can always count on that. We are spirit and we get a physical body to experience of life on earth. We come here to learn and to grow, to expand, and to go back. And the more we learn, the more we grow, the better off we are. And it's not about the learning from books, it's about learning from life experiences. That is the true learning. And that's where the true growth comes from. Now, this will really open up the area of L4 and L5 which is mostly compressed all day long as we stand and walk and sit. We also open the kidneys for good filtration of water in the body. 
and the adrenal glands for good adrenal response to stress. If you feel tingling sensations or your spine feeling like it's adjusting or any kind of sensation you feel there, it's your body trying to heal, to reassess, to realign itself. So let that be. Make sure you don't feel any pain or any nerve pain, which is sharp and you will know. Back off if you need to. We'll stay a little bit longer. You may feel a pull between the shoulder blades and under the shoulder blades. Between the shoulder blades, we hold the emotion of grief. And we always grieve something. We even grieve for yesterday or for 10 years ago or for our youth. That's okay. We grieve and we know that we are okay today. All right, inhale and lift up slowly. Now we'll extend the legs and fold forward with the legs out. So here again, we may need our bolster to lay our arms on. And just find a comfy, easy pose here, helping our hamstrings and the whole back body open and stretch. Just hang out, let it go, folding onto yourself. Take a notice here now on the way you breathe. Your breath is probably slower, gentler, kinder. 
then your mind is really focused and clear and present. Just after almost an hour of yin yoga, you do get some physical, mental, emotional effects where you subside from the sympathetic response and get into a more parasympathetic effect where the body rests and digests rather than fight, flight, and freeze. Enjoy the benefits of the practice. These precious moments you gave yourself as a gift today. Cherish these moments. Be grateful for your body. Be grateful for you as you showed up to practice. If you feel heat rising at the base of the spine, that is a good thing. You're healing and transmuting that energy in that area. Heat, it's a form of energy that is needs to be released. Mm -hmm. Inhale, lift off. One more little pose before we do Shavasana. <laughs> Okay, shoelace pose. Left knee is gonna go underneath and right knee crossing over on top. Again, for the hips, but also for the piriformis and TFL. So if knees are crossed all the way, you may find them on top of each other. If they're not crossing all the way, that's okay. We're gonna lean gently forward, walking our hands out a little bit. And then drop your body down over that bent knee. Nice, really good. Make sure it's gentle enough and the hold is gonna do the magic. So don't force the pose, it's already challenging on its own. Make sure your sit bones stay on the floor, however.
Get back as you inhale. And gently and slowly release that side and create a pose on the other side. This side could be your easier or your most challenging side. Still taking time here, observing, breathing, allowing, receiving, and letting go. Even if we open a tiny little space in this outer hip, we still are opening something. We bring light into the darkness of this hip joint. Feel the sensations, receive the feedback, reassess, readdress if you need to, and find stainless again. And know that you are exactly what you need to be. <laughs> Inhale and slowly and gently bring it back and very slowly and smoothly we transition to Shavasana. Mm. Even though we didn't do much, we work a lot. The body has received a lot and has let go of a lot. So we need a little bit processing time for all this stuff to be embedded in, soaked in and spread around, dissipated through all the body parts, all this new energy that we have gathered through opening up the blockages has to be spread around the whole body to recreate the balance in the homeostasis in your whole system. Spread your legs comfortably apart, your arms out to the side, palms up for receiving mode or down for grounding. Settle into your breath, close the eyes, and step inside of you. Have an internal experience like looking from inside out. and find out who is that that is looking. The observer, the ever-present, 
through the essence of you. And bring this presence, this awareness, this light above the crown of your head. Let it expand out into the sky, connecting you with the universe. It's a line of energy, a channel, a transmission, a communication of receiving, just like an antenna. You with the universal mind, with the creator. Create that connection, keep it going. And now draw energy from below through the feet, getting this rooting, grounding, supporting energy from Mother Earth. Breathe in that energy all the way to the crown. <clears throat> Breathe out from the crown to the feet. Breathe in from the crown to the navel point. Breathe out from the navel to the feet. Breathe in to the core. Breathe out from the navel, out, projecting out. Your energy, your goodness, your vibration. As we take care of ourselves and create good vibration in our Manipura Chakra, can project that good energy out as well. If we keep the negativity and the stagnation, we also can project that out to others. But we get a choice what we create and what we project in ourselves. Inhale now, start to stretch the arms overhead, lengthen the body. Exhale, bring the knees to the chest, hug them in, and rock from side to side gently, reawaken your spine. And come back to sit when you are ready. All right, thank you for joining me today, creating this beautiful energy into your body, minds, and spirits. Namaste. Have a good evening, good sleep tonight. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining today. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> so, Jane, do you, did you ever think um, about your son if he would benefit from yoga? Well, Mm. He needs a private class then. <laughs> okay. I mean, you would help him if you would be, you know, willing to do it and receive it. Yeah. 
And uh, slow down and calm down. And I have just given up. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a fan of Great way to head into the weekend. Yes. Yes. <laughs>